Hello everyone, it is I, the friendly neighborhood maelstrom penguin. Though, I'm not sure how a maelstrom can be friendly. Penguins? Yes. But maelstroms? And why would you want a maelstrom in your neighborhood? Hmm. Erm. In today's guide episode, I am going to be talking about grand companies. What exactly is a grand company and why am I talking about them? Well, a grand company is something you join early on in the game as part of the main scenario quest. The grand companies are primarily a military-based organization within each of the starting city-states, Gridania, Limsa and Ulda. After you have defeated your very first primal, word of your victory spreads, thanks to a certain Lollavel. Thus, each of the grand companies sends someone to recruit you to their cause. First, we have the Serpent Officer from the Order of the Twin Adder of Gridania. The Order of the Twin Adder is led by the Elder Seed Seer Khan E. Senna. The Adder's Nest, aka the Order of the Twin Adder's Headquarters, is located in New Gridania, west of the Aetherite. Those in the Order of the Twin Adder can be identified by their yellow-hued uniforms. Next, we have the Flame Officer from the Immortal Flames of Ulda. The Immortal Flames is led by the Flame General Roban Aldeen. The Immortal Flames headquarters can be found just to the east of the Aetherite in Ulda. Those in the Immortal Flames can be identified by their charcoal grey uniforms. Finally, we have the Storm Officer from the Maelstrom of Lemsilomensa. The Maelstrom is led by the Rugadan Pirate, Merlrib of Blufisvin. Please don't make me say her full name again. <laughs> The Maelstrom Command, aka Headquarters, can be found on the Limselominsen Upper Decks near the Aft Castle. Those in the Maelstrom can be recognized by their deep-hued uniforms. Each of these grand companies protects and aids their respective cities and its citizens. By joining one of them, you will be privy to numerous rewards and benefits. Thus, you must choose wisely. Which cause do you find most worthy of your support? Which city-state do you wish to thrive? Wait, wait, wait. That's not right. It does not matter which grand company you join. At. All. The only differences between the grand companies are their names, lore, headquarter locations, and aesthetics of the grand company-related gear, bardings, furnishings, and a few other minor things. Keywords. Minor. Things. And yes, that's it. If you are one to roleplay as your character, then your choice of which grand company to join will matter for the sake of that roleplaying element. Apart from that, choose whichever grand company to join that you want. If you're not happy with the one you'd first choose, you will be able to change grand companies. And even if you do like the one that you choose, you will still be able to change your grand company. If you are a completionist, this is a good thing as there are achievements to be earned for each of the grand companies. While it doesn't matter which grand company you join, you may still be curious as to what differences there are between the grand companies. In terms of gameplay, there are absolutely no differences. In terms of lore, aesthetics, names, etc., as I mentioned a moment ago, there are differences, and I will talk about a few of those aesthetic differences. The gear for the Maelstrom takes on a more navy and or pirate-like appearance. The gear for the Order of the Twin Adder takes on more of a rustic hunter type of look and the gear for the Immortal Flames takes on a more Colosseum-like appearance. At least that's how I would describe the different appearances, and it would also coincide with the lore of their respective city-states, etc. The chocobo bardings for each of the grand companies are only different in that each has the colors of its respective grand company and its respective flag or logo, if you will. There are minor differences between the aesthetics of the furnishing items as well. With that out of the way, which grand company should you choose to join? Now that is completely up to you. There are a number of reasons that you may like one grand company over another, such as the lore behind the grand company, the lore behind the city-state, your loyalty to your starting city-state, the travel distance to the grand company headquarters from the Aetherite, the travel distance between the grand company headquarters and the market board, the grand company gear aesthetics, role-playing reasons, so on and so forth. I will reiterate, it does not matter which grand company you choose to join, as it is completely up to you and your preferences. Also, as I mentioned before, keep in mind that you will be able to change grand companies eventually. 
but it will take a while before you are able to do so. I will talk about how that works later on in this video. After you have chosen your Grand Company, you will have a quest where you will aid the Grand Company in question immediately. Or, more specifically, you'll be going on a rescue mission, after which you will officially join your chosen Grand Company. And now that you have officially joined the Grand Company, you will have access to a My Little Chocobo side quest. However, as of patch 5.3, this side quest is now mandatory to complete in order to proceed to the end of the Everyone Reborn main scenario quest, which is partly why it will be marked with a purple explanation mark rather than the usual side quest symbol as the general golden color. Regardless of it being mandatory or not, it is worth doing. Why, you ask? Why, because you will get your very own Grand Company Chocobo. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, this is the real one. Uh, not only will you get your Grand Company Chocobo, it will also allow you to use other mounts. Thus, you will no longer have to run around on foot out on the field. In addition to getting your very own Grand Company Chocobo, this very same Chocobo will be able to fight alongside you in the open world. Unfortunately, they cannot fight with you in any instant duties. The ability for your chocobo to fight alongside you will be unlocked via a quest titled My Feisty Little Chocobo. This quest will be available once you reach level 30 in any Disciple of War or Magic class. Conveniently, once this quest becomes available to you, it will appear under the main scenario heads up display feature, similar to when you have a new class job quest available to you. Some other cool things that you can do with your Grand Company Chocobo is change what barding it wears, and you can even change the color of the Chocobo's plumage. I will be going over how to change the color of your Chocobo in a future video. Now that I have gone over the Grand Company Chocobo bit, you may like to know what other things you can do now that you're in a Grand Company. But first, let's talk about Grand Company ranks. When you first join your Grand Company, you are given the rank of Private Third Class. We can check our rank in the character menu, specifically character, profile, grand company. Here we can also see the different ranks. Currently the highest rank is captain. Right now you can see that I have the rank of captain. In order to increase our rank, we will first need to collect company seals. Since I joined the Immortal Flames, these company seals are called flame seals. When we do anything grand company related, we will be rewarded with company seals rather than guild. These seals can also be used to exchange for items via the Grand Company Quartermaster, specifically the Quartermaster for your Grand Company. That is, I cannot go to the Quartermaster for the Maelstrom as an example and try to exchange my flame seals there. As you gain higher ranks in your Grand Company, you will unlock additional rewards that can be exchanged for Company seals. Increasing your Grand Company rank is also required if you wish to purchase an apartment or house. That said, how do you increase your rank? Firstly, one will need to speak with a Grand Company personnel officer, and apply for a promotion. Again, this must be within your respective Grand Company headquarters. Here, the Flame personnel officer will inform us of what our rank is, and what the requirements are to qualify for the next rank. Once you are a higher rank, eventually how you rank up will change, so right now I cannot see what rank I am because I'm currently at the highest rank and the process for ranking up is no longer with that personnel officer anyways. So say we are still Storm Private 3rd class, the next rank would be Storm Private 2nd class. The requirement to obtain this next rank is 2000 company seals. Thus, I will need to collect 2000 seals and then exchange those to increase my rank aka get a promotion. By doing so, I will also increase the maximum seals that I can hold from 10,000 to 15,000. As you continue to increase your rank, the cost will increase. Fortunately, the maximum number of seals that you can have on hand will also increase. Further, as you increase your rank, you will be required to do other things in order to get a promotion. For example, when you first joined your grand company, an additional hunting log page was added to your hunting log. In order to increase your grand company rank to Sergeant 3rd class, you must have completed the company hunting log rank 1, along with exchanging 6,000 seals. As you increase in rank, there will be additional quests that you must complete in order to increase your rank. Two of these quests will require you to do two different dungeons. One for the Dismal Darkhold dungeon, 
while another is for the Orum Vale dungeon. So when you get the quests that unlock these two dungeons, if you wait for the respective Grand Company quest, you will kill two birds with one stone and only have to run those dungeons once. Finally, once you are rank 2nd Lieutenant and have reached level 47 with a Disciple of War or Magic class, you will unlock a Squadron and Commander quest. This quest will unlock Grand Company Squadrons. You must also have completed the Rising to the Challenge quest that unlocks the Challenge Log. The Rising to the Challenge quest can be found in Limsa Upper Decks by speaking with the NPC Itolan, or however you say the name. This is a level 15 quest and will have a purple colored explanation point quest marker. After you have unlocked the Adventurer Squadron, in order to continue to increase your Grand Company rank, you will need to work on your squadron. Earlier, when I mentioned that the Flame Personnel Officer would no longer show me what my rank is and what I need to do to rank up, it is because the increasing the rank is done through the squadron related things. As you progress with your squadrons, you will eventually get missions for your squadrons that, if successfully completed, will unlock additional things for your squadron, but also promote you to a higher rank. I will get into some additional details of what squadrons are and how they work later on in this video. Most of what I go over squadrons will be in a separate video, however. To summarize the requirements of each rank, here is a little chart. I will leave this up on the screen for a few seconds rather than reading them out. And that is what we know of the current ranks. The requirements for second commander and higher are unknown at this time. Now with that out of the way, how do you collect company seals? You can earn company seals by participating in fates. After joining a grand company, seals will be rewarded from fates. The leveling roulette, again, after joining a grand company, seals will be rewarded. And the guild hest roulette, after joining a grand company, seals will also be rewarded. And other ways are completing grand company leave quests, completing grand company delivery missions, the grand company hunting log, and various grand company related quests. The hunting log and the grand company related quests will be one time rewards, while all the rest will be as many times as you do them. Sometimes, however, the rewards will only be once per day. As I mentioned, you will also be able to get company seals from the Grand Company delivery missions. This feature is unlocked immediately after you have joined your Grand Company. These missions are specifically for crafting and gathering classes. The supply missions are for your crafter classes and the provision missions are for your gatherers. And note, you will not see any supply or provisioning missions until you have unlocked a crafter and a gatherer, respectively. By submitting the requested items, we'll reward you with company seals and experience for that specific crafting or gathering class. If you submit high quality items, you will earn higher rewards. The items requested will be listed based on the order of the crafting and gathering class, which are listed in the same way as the character class slash job list in the character window. Additionally, you can just look at the respective symbols to identify which items are for which classes. The items that the Grand Company request will change every day, so make sure to submit them before the end of the day if you are planning on collecting them. You will be able to check to see what these items are by looking in the Timers menu. Duty, Timers, and Next Mission Allowance. Here you will be able to see the same list that the NPC at the company headquarters lists. Once you have reached Sergeant 2nd Class, you will also unlock Expert Delivery Missions, which will allow you to exchange special gear for company seals. Moving on to talk about Adventure Squadrons, or Squadrons for short. As I mentioned earlier in this video, once you have earned the second lieutenant rank, you will unlock a quest titled Squadron and Commander. Once the quest is accepted and completed, which is done by just talking to the NPC, Adventure Squadrons will be unlocked. Note: In order to accept this quest, you are required to have a level 47 Disciple of War or Magic class or job. By the time you are able to earn the second lieutenant rank, you are more than likely to have at least one Disciple of War or Magic class or job at this level. And now that you have unlocked the squadrons, you will gain access to the barracks. The barracks can be found to the left of the Grand Company counter area. 
Within the barracks, you will have a Grand Company Squadron Sergeant that will assist you with your squadron. When you first enter the barracks, you will learn a bit about squadrons and that you currently have three recruits. Before you can officially do anything with your squadron, you will first need to recruit another squadron member. I will explain how you get recruits in a future video when I go into more advanced details about squadrons. Anyways, once you have your four or more squadron members, you will be able to train them and deploy them on squadron missions and then later on join them in command missions. There will be special squadron missions that will be required for your squadron to successfully complete in order for you to get a promotion. Uh, that is for you to increase your rank. And that is where I'm going to leave it, leave this bit about squadrons. As I mentioned a moment ago, I will be having a future video that goes into more details about squadrons. If plans go accordingly, this should be two videos from now in the guide series. But joining a grand company will not only reward you the ability to unlock additional features in the game, but it will also give you the opportunity to earn rewards via achievements or exchange company seals for them. One such achievement is completing the hunting log, which will reward a minion. Other achievements will reward titles or pieces of gear, which are more glamour now than anything. There are other achievements that are, well, just achievements, and such as this one, I make this look good, which is rewarded when you wear the soldier's cap, soldier's overcoat, soldier's gloves, and soldier boots while speaking with Jonathan and Gridania. This is the gear set that I'm currently wearing. As I mentioned a little while ago, one may also exchange company seals for items. Some such things, uh, some such items include bardings, furnishings, minions, crafting items, glamour items, ventures, food, etc. While this next bit is not related to grand companies per se, there will be quests around your grand company headquarters that unlock different PvP related things, that is player versus player related things such as gaining access to the Wolves' Den after you have reached level 30 with a Disciple of War or Magic class. This quest is called A Pup No Longer. You will also gain access to the Frontline PvP after reaching level 30 with a Disciple of War or Magic class or job and have completed the A Pup No Longer quest. Once you have reached level 50 with a Disciple of War or Magic class or job, you will also unlock the Let the Hunt Begin quest which unlocks the hunt. The hunt is effectively a daily and weekly hunt for different enemies, similar to how the hunting log is, except that these are not a one-time thing and the rewards are different. Now that you know what you can do by joining a grand company, how the ranking system works, and some of the rewards that you can obtain, etc., how do you change grand companies? Once you have reached the rank of second lieutenant, you will be able to change grand companies. Each time you change your Grand Company, you will have to wait 15 days before you will be able to change your Grand Company again. The first time you change your Grand Company, it will be free, any time then after will cost 50,000 gil. To actually change Grand Companies, you will need to speak to the Grand Company Personnel Officer, so that's the same NPC where you would get your first few promotions, and then you can change your Grand Company from there. When you change to a grand company for the first time, you will be a, you will be at the technically second lowest rank, private third class, the first rank being recruit, but as that is granted after the completion of that first initial quest, in this case it's the lowest rank. Anyway, when you return to a previously joined Grand Company, your rank for that Grand Company will be restored to that rank that you were before you left it. Thus, you will be able to get all the achievements, minions, bardings, etc. from each Grand Company if you so desire to do so. Note: Any gear that you obtain from any Grand Company will not be equipable if you are no longer in that Grand Company. This includes glamour effects. However, if say you still had a Immortal Flames gear piece on and then you join the Order of the Twin Adder and you change some of your gear except for that Immortal Flames gear to something, you are able to do that so long as you don't change the, immor uh, the Immortal Flames gear. Also note that the company seals do not cross over but will still be there if you swap back to the Grand Company meaning if you change grand companies, you're basically starting at zero. 
And that is, of course, because the seals are based on the Grand Company. So if I'm in the Immortal Flames, it are fl they are flame seals. If they are, if I'm in the Maelstrom, they are storm seals, etc. One nice thing is that when you change from one Grand Company to another, you will unlock the hunting log for that Grand Company. Thus, the seals that you will obtain from that will allow for you to quickly rank up in your new Grand Company. Another nice thing about changing Grand Companies is that the Adventurer Squadron members will remain the same. You will, however, need to reach Second Lieutenant in whichever new Grand Company you changed to before you will be able to do anything with your squadron. And that is it for Grand Companies. In the next guide episode, I will be explaining how to obtain the Grand Company Chocobo, how to change the color of its plumage, and how you will be able to have it fight alongside you, among other things related to this. Two guide episodes from now will be about squadrons and how they work. If there are additional questions about Grand Companies, please feel free to leave your questions below. If you think I've missed something, please leave a comment down below about that too. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful to you, and if it was, please consider hitting that like button. Please also consider subscribing if you would like to see more content like this. Now that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.